On today's Tuesday Talk, we are answering a question from a viewer about our puppies. They wanted to know if we've ever had any complaints, police called, kicked out of the campground, or anything like that because of excessive barking. Luckily, no. Luckily, no. Um, Patty used to be our main culprit for barking, but now Patty can't hear anyone outside the airstream. Yeah. So we don't get as much barking out of her. That is one nice thing about Patty's hearing going. <laughs> it's because she just doesn't notice. She doesn't hear the people walk by, the dogs walk by, trucks. You know, yeah. She she just stays sleeping. Yeah. She Our doesn't... other dog, Penny, notices that way more. But she usually doesn't bark. Yes. She will run up on, on the couch and look. Um, she will she will put two eyes yeah. on whoever happens to be walking by, but usually she doesn't bark. So there are some ways to help if your dog is prone to barking um, because White this noise. is yeah this is a, a concern because a lot of um, campgrounds will they have it in their rules that they can kick you out if your be if your dog is excessively loud while you're gone um, so white noise is one of them like ceiling fans f fantastic fans exhaust fans those kinds of things yeah or any other white noise generator you might have yeah those are good options if you can have the windows closed that makes it so it's harder for them to hear out and for people to hear in that's not always possible if you're boondocking and you need to have airflow or whatever that's why fantastic fans are good for then but um when we had power we'd actually keep the windows closed have the ac on and turn the fan on so it was always on low whether the ac on was on or not and that way it kept a very consistent noise and they couldn't hear very well outside that's right um, you can also close blinds and things where they can actually see out because sometimes dogs won't bark unless they can see what they're barking at. So that can also help and we'll do that sometimes. And then if you're really worried about it, take them with you. I yeah. mean, that's probably your best bet. If you have a good traveling dog, yeah. that's, that, that's always an option too. Yeah, because it can cause concerns with campgrounds. We have not had any complaints because our dogs are pretty good, but we have known people who have had problems. And we actually know people who have put their dogs into doggy daycare when they're going into like this, the national parks or whatever. A lot of places will have like doggy daycare, doggy day centers near the park so that people who are traveling can put their dogs somewhere to go and have fun while they go into the park where the dog's not allowed. So. That's right. So hopefully that answered your it. question. We have an entire playlist about our puppies and traveling full time with dogs. So we'll make sure to link that in the description below and in the cards up above. I think one of the videos talked about whether we would have dogs if we had to do it all over again. Exactly. All so. kinds of interesting discussions. Exactly. If you have a question for a future Tuesday talk, please leave that in the comments below. Yeah. We'll try to get to it in a future video. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with somebody yep. who might be interested. Yep. And if you have a suggestion on how to keep dogs quiet when at campgrounds in your RV, please leave that in the comments below because we are interested and obviously other people are interested as well. That's right. And until next time, bye guys. Bye. Yep, minus the muzzle. <laughs>